Hutzler. I'm from the Human Development and Family Studies Master's Program at URI. I also went to undergrad in psychology here. And um, both of us are currently working on the Early Intervention Recruitment and Retention Grant through the university. And um, our aim is to look um, for qualified individuals to participate in internships during uh, undergrad and graduate school, as well as job placement in the early intervention field. of our grant is internships. So at the end we'll have a sign-in sheet with some information for internships if any of you would like to work with the population of Berkeley 3. Um, this might be a good opportunity for you. Um, after the presentation you guys are all welcome to come and check our board out. That's really all about the internship. Okay, so welcome to Diversity Week. Um, this is our early intervention um, PowerPoint and the reason why we fit into Diversity Week is because early intervention um, attempts to gain any families, any children with discrepancies. Um, it can be any socioeconomic status, any ethnic group. Um, there's no discrimination whatsoever and they, they obtain individuals working with them who are bilingual, trilingual, anything that will help um, communication with the parents if there's no English spoken at the home or anything like that. And what is early intervention? Early intervention is a family-centered program. It doesn't treat just the child. It incorporates the parents in on the education portion. Um, EI has a holistic approach, which basically means holistic is derived from a Greek word meaning whole or entire. So it treats discrepancies um, in mental capabilities, cognition, physiological, biological. It encompasses all of that. Um, EI serves children from birth to three years of age, which um, any of you early childhood majors understand that birth through three is really a key time in development. Um, it provides comprehensive, community-based, culturally sensitive services to children and their families. Services are provided outside institutions, um, which basically means they're not in a clinical setting, they're not in a hospital, any type of situation like that. They're at home in their individual houses and rooms. Um, it's community-based in the natural environment. And a huge emphasis is on parental and family education. Um, early intervention. It complies with the rules and regulations of the Department of Human Services. EI works with the child's family and local school system. So they're almost like a liaison between um, individuals at school systems, um, any type of medical doctors or caretakers that are working with the family. They kind of oversee all of that. Um, EI is both state and federally funded. Um, parents do not pay for EI services, which is huge. Unlike head programs like Head Start, where it's based on income and certain families apply and certain, certain families do not, nobody who needs services through the EI program is turned away, nor do they have to pay. Um, At-risk children can be referred by either a doctor, a teacher, a guardian, or a concerned adult. Parents have to give consent before their child receives the services, but it's not just the parent who um, can apply for these services for the child. Anybody who sees any discrepancies within a child, whether you know them or not, you can always refer them. Criteria, criteria to receive EI services. Children may be referred into EI if they display discrepancies in any of the following areas. Anything with cognition or thinking abilities, any, if they're not um, on point with their age range, physical abilities including vision and hearing, um, communication, any type of speech delays, social or emotional development, which is really big in this, um, in this age range, and adaptive or self-help development. And that basically means the approach that EI uses, it doesn't do anything for the child. Instead, it teaches them the skills so they are able to do it for themselves. Children may also qualify for EI services if their parents display mental or physical illnesses, past or present substance abuse, 
inadequate parental care, lack of family support, and de developmental delays, which is another key part of EI because not just the child has to display d these discrepancies or issues or anything like that. If the parents, if they're concerned with anything with the parents, the children can be, reserved, um, can be re referred and receive services. IFSP, this is Individualized Family Service Plans. And um, these are documents and guides for the EI process for children and their families. It's completed within 45 days of the ref initial referral of the child. And um, the family members and service providers work as a team to plan, implement, and evaluate services tailored to the family's unique concerns, priorities, and resources. And this also falls under um, ethnic families who either do not speak English, um, do not understand a lot of English. They can um, obtain service providers and coordinators who speak other languages. So what are some of the career opportunities in EI? EI is always looking for a diverse staff. They're, um, they're full of nurses, any type of educators, nutritionists, psychologists, social workers, family counselors, physical therapists, speech pathologists, service coordinators, and occupational therapists. So as you can see, they provide a large and wide range of services to these families. Uh, service coordinators. Each family is assigned a service coordinator. This person arranges all evaluations and, and services for the child as well as the family. Service coordinators also meet with all the service providers. So again, they kind of act like a liaison, almost like an umbrella effect. They form an interdisciplinary team to ensure the child and family are getting their needs met. They're really good at communicating with the families as well, asking the parents, you know, what do you see at home? What needs to be worked on? What can we do to help you in your daily life? Um, service coordinator one, no certification is needed, just a bachelor's degree in one of the human services um, areas that we discussed earlier. A service two coordinator, which is usually um, the ones that do work directly with the families and they have more positions open for service two coordinators than service one. And um, service two coordinators are responsible for evaluations. So they do diagnostic testing, um, any type of situation like that. And it does require certification such, such as a license of social work, occupational therapy, physical therapy, or special education. Early intervention specialists. Um, under the early intervention specialists, again, there's a wide range of individuals that they're looking to obtain, and these include any type of uh, special educators, physical therapists, occupational therapists, licensed social workers, early intervention educators, speech and language pathologists, psychiatrists, and other therapists. And the specialists work with service coordinators, and the specialist responsibilities include conducting specific evaluations and assessments, such as the diagnostic testing, um, they provide direct services to children and families, and they supply families with activities to assist their children in accomplishing everyday tasks, which is another huge part of EI. Because they work in the home, there's not always all the resources needed for um, implementing different therapies, so they work with what's in the home. If they're trying to teach a child you know, to stand and move and become mobile and walk, um, they will make sure that whatever the child wants to engage in or play with is out of reach so the child has to physically get up and move. A lot of times they'll, pl they'll put magnets on a refrigerator out of the child's reach so they have to stand up and gain muscle control in their legs and everything. So why early intervention? Um, 1,700 children are being serviced by EI at ev any given time in Rhode Island. It's a large population that falls under this. Um, an early identification of developmental risks or disabilities allow the providers and families to address the concerns immediately. Again, birth through three is a critical time for development. <coughs> Personality, physical, um, walking, talking, any type of um, anything in that area is usually concentrated with birth through three. EI staffing needs. Um, there are approximately 250 early intervention employees in Rhode Island at 12 different sites. We work with all those sites in placing um, internships as well as job opportunities. So if any of you have any um, desire to work with this population or children with special needs, anything like that, it's a great opportunity to get your foot in the door. Um, 
Most majors are wanted. There's approximately 25 job openings at any given time in AI field in Rhode Island, which is amazing considering the uh, difficulty for obtaining a job currently. And um, this is a continuation of early intervention. It's children with special health care needs. If the population that you wish to work with is older than three years old, this is where um, they take over. When a child ages out of EI at three years, if they still require services, the CSHCN um, will take over. They're working with five, uh, we work with five CSHCN sites in Rhode Island. Um, the sites serve children from ages three to 21 with conditions such as emotional disturbances, cognitive delays, autism spectrum disorders, health impairments, learning disabilities, speech disorders, as well as devel uh, developmental delays. Career opportunities, um, they look for home health care specialists, mobility specialists, dental care professionals, mental health professionals, genetic counselors, and family therapists and counselors. Uh, internships at EI or CSHCN, um, these are great opportunities. A lot of the people that we've placed in the sites have gone on to work at the particular site where they interned at. Um, it's based on career aspirations and proximity, so we can usually cater it to where you live, what your um, mobility availability is, as well as what your interests are. If you're interested in becoming a speech pathologist, we can hook you up with a speech pathologist. You shadow her, see what her day is like, um, go on in-home visits, all sorts of great stuff like that. And the number of hours are based on how many credits are needed for your internship, the major, and class specifications. So some examples are um, HDF 480, which is six credits, which is 230 hours. What can I expect while interning for EI? Um, you can definitely expect to gain a better knowledge of early interventions and the services that are provided, learning firsthand how to interact with the children and their families. Um, a lot of times we go through school and read out of books and study in the classroom and don't get a lot of hands-on opportunities. And it's really important to understand how to communicate with these families. A lot of times um, you're in, an, in a household that has never received services. They don't have the adequate parenting skills. So you have to kind of be that bridge for them. Um, having opportunities to go on home visits and learning about possible EI career opportunities. So these are our internship sites. Um, as you can see, we have quite a few of them. Most of them are right around the Kingston campus. We have some, some of them that are a little more north. And uh, we have our CHSCN sites as well. And you'll be able to find all those sites in our pamphlet here if you're interested. And uh, remember, this is important. An internship is just like a job. It requires you to have professional etiquette, which includes showing up on time, calling if you cannot make it, wearing appropriate clothing, and respecting people you are working with. This is important because, again, you're going on home visits. Uh, you're working with children who do have discrepancies, and they need consistency. So if you're supposed to be there every week, every week at a certain time, that child expects you to be there. For more information, our office is located at the Transition Center, and um, our number is 874-4036. You can call us anytime. We'll get back to you. You can stop in and see us. We're room 208 in the Transition Center, and we also have a website and an email address. Referrals for children to receive EI services. In order to refer a child, um, you need to contact the Early Intervention of Rhode Island, and this is their 1-800 number. You can receive help with the referral process and be directed to an EI site closest to the child if need be. Um, these are some parent testimonials that we put in here. Uh, it's really interesting to hear what the parents have to say and how much they really enjoy the services that are, be provide, uh, that are provided to them. And uh, above all, the, um, the people who work with these children and families make sure that it's fun and engaging for the kids as well as for the parents. So our first one, before early intervention, my family seemed to blame me for my son's behavior from his autism, which happens a lot. A lot of times, you know, you could be at the airport and there's a child who's running around screaming and you're wondering where the parent is and why they're not, you know, wrangling the child in. Well, a lot of times it could be that they may have, they may have sensory issues, they can't sit for a long period of time, they don't have trunk muscles to sit. So you really never know what's going on with that child and it's important to keep that in mind. Um, my family even tried to give me some home remedies to fix him or cure him of his disease. Early intervention does not claim to fix 
anything. They do claim that they treat, but they treat holistically, the whole child. Um, the EI professionals helped me feel proud to be my daughter's mother. This is another huge, important part of EI. Um, they make sure that the parents understand that even a small gain is, is huge for these kids, you know. If they haven't walked their entire life and they start standing, it's not the fact that they are not walking yet, but it's the fact that they're standing. So they take baby steps. EI saw my daughter just as a baby and not as a broken baby. Again, along the same lines. They don't look at these kids as um, needing to be fixed. They just look at them as needing a little more help than maybe others. They helped me celebrate my son being among the living. We cheered together when he accomplished new tasks. It's really about the teamwork between EI and staff and parents. The more you put in, the more your child will improve, which is another part that they really emphasize in EI.